Hi, I'm Selena from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester, and I'm here with Pedro Martin, and he is an artist and, and um, an author. He has actually just uh, won an, a Newbery Honor for his latest book. And um, Pedro, I'm for readers unfamiliar with your work, uh, how would you describe what it is that you do? Uh, well, I think mostly I'm a memoirist. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been doing kind of this online memoir for several years. And so now this is the the next iteration of that online uh, series. Uh, so it's called Mexican, a graphic memoir. And it's the story about the time when we were, I was probably like 13 years old, where my parents crammed all 11 of us into this old Winnebago motor home and this uh, pickup truck with ropes for seatbelts and took us on this 2000 mile epic journey down to Mexico to get my grandfather and bring him back to the United States to live with us, which at the time I was not on board with. This was, I thought, oh, the most ridiculous, horrible idea uh, because we were a family of 11 living in a house that was built for five and that we were bringing this other person on board. And then on top of that, um, I, I for sure foresaw a communication problem because um, even though we all spoke Spanish in the house, uh, my older brothers and sisters and my parents were all born in Mexico. And then the younger four of us were born in the United States. So our English and Spanish were all like mixed together. And here comes my grandfather, who's like 100 percent super Mexican. And, and not only that, like he's revolutionary war Mexican, like he was that old. And so I was like, what are we going to even talk about like how do I explain the, the important things to me like you know is Chewbacca a Bigfoot or is he something else you know like there's like like what are we gonna have to talk about so that the whole story kind of uh is around that journey and then finding out stuff about him that was very super interesting and exciting and that maybe he was some kind of man of mystery or some kind of hero that I started kind of learning about as the trip went on so that's kind of what the story is about. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So that was actually the, the whole inspiration for your story. Yes. Yeah. The whole, yeah, the whole trip. Well, yeah. Um, and, and we had heard stories about him years before that, but then in the lead up to this, to the trip, it started to kind of come out more. And then, um, and ever since then, we still have stories popping out about my grandfather that, you know, that are like, Oh my gosh, that sounds like an amazing another amazing book I have to <laughs> so I'm furiously taking notes in my phone I'm like tell me more about this this man that you know that I come from and and why am I not as as a superhero as this guy so. and this is your graphic novel called Mexicans yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. okay so what um what draws uh people to the particular genre that um or style that you create well, I think, and I've noticed this with kids specifically, and and I, well, I won't say that, but but it's 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 a memoir, so people are kind of like get invested because it's real people and it's a real story. It's a little heightened for you know for a graphic novel, but people kind of get hooked and they're like, oh, I want to know more about this person, and I know you're not going to hear a beginning to end story; it's going to be open ended, so there's more to come and. I think people enjoy that because anytime we watch a movie that's a memoir or based on a true story, like we're always like on the phone right after the thing to like find out what happened next. Like, is that person still alive or what was the, you know, the, the society like around that time and why did these things happen that way? Cause you know, it's just, it just becomes really fascinating. And I think with kids and I've noticed that whenever I've gone on, on to a speaking thing where they kind of want to know, like, Oh, what was that really like? And, you know, I, I can't believe you guys didn't have, you know, telephones. And it was just that kind of stuff where it's just really kind of fun to hook into it. And then there's a sense of nostalgia, too, because it's this book is set in the 70s. And so people who grew up in there kind of find little bits of nostalgia that they uh, enjoy, like picking back out and, and reliving. OK, well, what about the fact that it's a graphic novel? What do you think draws readers to graphic novels? Um, I I really like it. It does add a send a, a whole second reading to the book because um, not only are you telling a story just verbally and with the dialogue, there's also these visual components that 
support the whole idea and expand on it. Like I was, I, because we were a, kind of a poor immigrant family, we didn't have book books in the house and we didn't start really getting any reading material that to come in the house until my older brother started buying mad magazines and comic books and stuff like that. So that's where I learned how to read. So for the, for all my life, pictures and words have been connected to each other. And so when I started doing this story and, and, uh, I kind of felt like this was like the natural way to tell the story just coming from me. But I've heard from other people saying, Oh, like there's, there's more to the second reading of the book because there's all this background imagery that's in there. And there's a lot of, you know, detail that kind of goes by kind of fast when you're reading it and, and stuff. So, so I think people enjoy that and enjoy kind of like, especially kids, you know, they like going back and reading it again, which is which is awesome. I love to hear when they said, oh yeah, I've read it three times. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I really wanted to have, you know, really wanted to see all the little things and you know, how they reflected, you know, the story. So I think that's kind of the, the, the main grab of graphic novel. Okay. And you're an artist. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about that. Tell me about your work as an artist. Oh, well, um, well, I used to, my uh, coming out of college, I got hired at Hallmark Cards. So I was a greeting card artist for years. And then at some point, I kind of got the opportunity to kind of write just a tiny bit within Hallmark Cards. Hallmark Cards is like this amazing writing staff and, and just world class artists. So it was kind of learning from the best. It was like a grad school with pay. It was just like everybody was a teacher and you could just learn from everybody. And Learning from the writers was like a harder gig to go through because I wasn't a natural writer, but just watching how they did it and reading what they wrote and then finally getting to participate in the writing process was kind of like just amazing thing. And so towards the end of my career that Hallmark, we started doing um, animated uh, specials for television with uh, uh, these characters called Hoops and Yo-Yo and the second one, which was a Halloween special. Uh, I got to be a co-writer on it, which was, which was great. And I kind of felt like, oh, I really enjoy telling stories and I really enjoy the, the video or the visual component too. And so, so I kind of started pushing those two together at that point saying like, oh, I want to illustrate, do backgrounds, but I also want to write the story. And so, so that kind of like started pushing me to this direction. And when I finally left Hallmark, I found that I was happiest doing both at the same time, rather than just being a strict illustrator doing other people's stories. Like I wanted to do my tell my stories and do it in a way that I felt comfortable and happy doing. So, so for that first four years after I left Hallmark, it was doing this the online series and developing that voice. So, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mix now. So, um, so children's books actually kind of um really help you in that in you being able to use both um, illustrations and yeah be an author as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 a lot of fun and then and, and it's so within the whole genre of children's books and graphic novels there's such a wide range you know of how uh, how people tell stories that i'm just right now i'm really doing this one thing but i really kind of admire the picture book people who do things with such like uh, brevity and, you know, just beautiful, like small, small writing, big picture kind of stuff. So I want to learn how to do that a little bit better. And, and then I just, at one point, at some point I want to do prose, you know, hundred percent and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, also you can write adult, <laughs> you'll be able to write adult graphic novels too. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> Although, although in my head, I wasn't like, when I first pitched the book, I didn't think it mid-grade. I didn't think of the, the genre, you know, the genre specifically. I was like, this is the story. And it wasn't my, it was my agent who said, oh, this is, this will be really good for middle grade. You know, this is a really good middle grade. And I, oh, I didn't, it had never entered my head that it was some, it was specific. I thought it was just a, a story. And he's just like, no, this is this. I'm like, okay. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'll do something a little bit more adult. But your book is not exactly a memoir, is it? It's, it's a fiction book, isn't it? 
Uh, well, no, it's it's a memoir. It's a kind of heightened memoir, but yeah, it's a memoir. It's all that stuff actually happened. There's fiction in it where we're hearing stories about my grandfather, and I'm embellishing and retelling, and just as a kid would do. But yeah, it's based on my family. And oh, this, I know it's based this. on it, but um, but it's written kind of as a fictional book, isn't it? I'm or new to the, it? I'm new to the genre. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure what you mean by that, but uh, um, yeah, this is this is a story. This is this trip has been like one of these stories that my family has told, has relived over and over again. So we, whenever we got together for Christmas or camping trips, you know, somebody would start telling parts of the story of of this trip that was memorable to them. So I had over the years heard the story, been in the story, told the story, and so I've taken like the best of all the retellings of those stories and put them together as this one big one big trip kind of thing. Okay. Did you have to do any research at all for this book? Yeah, I did I did a ton of research. Um just most of most of it was like remember trying to get the specifics about the the trail we took to get down there. Um but um the other research was again going back to my family and uh not only asking them questions but also getting unsolicited information from my brother and sister so, so once they found out i was doing this my brother leon was really you know adamant about sending me bits and stuff of of story that he remembered from the trip so little details that would that would have that were lost to me came back because they were like oh don't forget this bit this is really interesting and i'm like oh this is actually kind of a profound moment. So I, I need to like put this back into the story and move the story around a little bit. So, so there was, there was a lot of that kind of family research and trying to find out like, you know, there's uh part of it. The story involves my grandmother who I never met died years before I was born and trying to find pictures of her. Uh, but at the time I, there was only ever one picture of her and it was this blurry picture. And so just trying to recreate her was kind of a, a chore. I like, I wanted to do the best I could, uh, but the, the references weren't there. And, and even information about her personally was kind of hard to find because people would just say like, Oh, she was a really lovely lady and she was very giving, but there was like no details. Like, like, what did she like to eat? What does she wear? Like none of that detail was available because she had passed away for so long ago. So I kind of had to work around the subject by, kind of reflecting what people had told me about her so so a lot of it was kind of like this is this is the sense I get of her but this I don't have you know enough to tell a story about her really hmm. okay now um what was the biggest challenge that you had in writing and putting out the graphic novels of Mexicans well this this is my debut this is my very first thing so I didn't really know what it was how long it was going to be like when I first signed it I think that was my first question was like how long does it have to be and they and my editors was like well how long do you want it to be I'm like, well I don't know 250 pages and she's like sounds good and I'm like well when's it when's it due that's my other question when's it due and they're like when do you think it could be done and I'm like I have no idea I have no idea how long it takes to do this so we just picked an arbitrary date I'm like how about this date And they're like great and I'm like okay so I just started working and I worked and worked and worked and worked. And then on the date the all the roughs were due for the the what I call the blue line, all the pencil work was due. I was putting together the PDF for the pencils, and I noticed that the PDF count was 320. And I was like, oh, it's like that's pretty respectable. Like we can do something with that. It's really good. I'm really proud of myself. But then I realized, oh no, that's 320 spreads that's 640 pages. So then I just hit send. Cause I'm like, I just panically like, ah, I don't know what to do. I'm just like, so I hit send. And so the thing that was supposed to be under 300 pages was now 640 pages. And it took like a week for my ed poor editor to get back to me. And she's like, you know, we, we don't do books this long. That's fiscally irresponsible to do. <laughs> A 640 page book so expensive like, expensive it's going to take up a bunch of space on the wall and she's like we don't do that so she's like you got to cut it in half 
So the big, wow. the hardest part was cutting it in half. Yeah. But it was also the best part about it because the process of cutting it in half was like a really great writing process of saying like, what is it? What is the most important thing to this story? Like what, what is the core of the story? And we had to do that kind of like, you know, uh, exercise was saying like all this other stuff is as fun as it is, as funny as you think it is, it doesn't matter to the story. Like they, these are the important bits of the story. And so it took us probably like two weeks to, to chop it down to the lean 320 it is now. So, yeah. So that was kind of the, the hardest part of the whole thing was just like understanding how to do it. And then realizing I can't have everything and I have to kill those darlings. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, so what can we expect from you in the near future? Oh, well, I'm currently trying to do a sequel to this, this book. So uh, my family is a family of immigrants, but also sharecroppers. So there's this whole sharecropper life that wasn't covered in the first book that I really kind of wanted to go into because I think it's it's kind of fascinating and interesting for me to tell these stories but I think for for middle grade kids which is going to be focused to it'll be really interesting because I don't think there's a whole lot of stories about families who uh, share crop together in the fields you know strawberry fields of California so so I that's I'm telling I'm saying too much but that's kind of where I'm going uh, my story that's the stuff you cut out of the first book right <laughs> yeah well no and the, the, even that stuff man all that that got cut out people were like oh can't you make something out of it? i was like no it's dead to me it's garbage no it was, it was like i'm going forward i'm not gonna go back <laughs> okay so um what were the steps that you took to to bring the um that book from you know from start to to end um uh, well it it was funny because i um i started writing these little stories uh so if anybody wants to catch up on my instagram or go comics there i did this whole series like for four years i'm still doing it now called mexican stories and they're just these little memoir stories uh like 20 panel long stories that i do with them every week so I had, when I was at Hallmark, I had kind of started the process of writing these stories down on these little three by five cards and putting them in a lunchbox. And when I left Hallmark, I found that lunchbox and I popped it open and I found all these stories. And that's where I'm like, oh, I want to do these as a series. And so that's where the Mexican stories kind of came from. But then after like about four years of doing that, I think it is, it was such a blur. After about doing several years of doing that, I decided, oh, I want to get paid because <laughs> this is free to the world. And it's like, so I decided I would kind of pull, pull them all together as a compilation or a, yeah, kind of a collection and try to sell it as a collection. But when I sent it out, I sent it out like a big dummy directly to publishers and um, nobody was interested. It was just like, no, even, I mean, it was not even no, it's just dead silence. And then a friend of mine said, Oh, you need to like pitch it to an agent, get an agent and, and pitch it that way. And so I, I found an agent and I pitched it to him and he, well, and what I had done was I had put all these stories together and then I put these little uh, kind of just written stories that would link all of them together. And he's like, ah, nobody wants the, a compilation. He says, but this la one of these last sentences you wrote here is really interesting. And I said, Oh, what's the, what sentence? He's like, Oh, the sentence says, um, we went down to Mexico to get my grandfather and bring him back to the United States and things got really dark and I don't want to talk about it anymore. And so that was like the little sentence or little phrase that he picked out of the whole pitch. He's just like, tell me that story. What is that story about? And I'm like, Oh, that I said, well, that's kind of a big long story. And I really, I really don't want to talk about it. And just like, he's like, no, that's the story. So do that story and come back to me. And so it took, it took like maybe like three drafts of, of, of that story for it to come out into something that he felt like, oh, this is really, you know, this is strong and this could be uh, a book. Mm -hmm. And so, so we pitched it. Um, and then probably like the next day, I think we got, you know, a response from some publishers or just like, yeah, let's, 
you know, let's uh, bid on this story and let's see who who gets it. And so, um, so yeah, Penguin picked it up, and and then the process was going back again, well, you know, and and breaking it all down. And the the, the neat part about it was the editor, uh, Kate Harrison, just had like a ton of questions, like like volumes of questions about everything, and most of it was uh, how did how did you feel about it at the time? And the way I was writing before was like more, it was, everything was very comedic. And she's like, well, this is about a little boy who's going through some traumatic moments. Like, what was he thinking? And I'm like, okay, you're right. Like I had to put myself back into my 13 year old brain Mm -hmm. and be like, what was I, what was I reacting to at the time? How did I feel about it? You know, I know what older me is going to say about it, but, what was the kid saying about it? And then I became very like conscious of what, who I called the kid. I conscious of the kid and what the kid was going through in subsequent versions of the, of the, of the manuscripts. I'm like, Oh, what would the kid have thought here? And then I would write it. Plus I would have the narration that was more of the adult me describing stuff. So it was, it was a mix and it was really interesting and a really kind of fun way to, to figure this out. And so I, so that kind of taught me a lot about how to tell stories a little bit more to that middle grade uh, group. And I hope that the next book will have a little bit more of that and it'll be a little bit easier process where now I'm kind of like, yeah, I need to take care of all these characters and make sure that they're okay. And that they're, you know, they're telling their truths in their story. So it, that's kind of the whole process. And sorry, it was very long, but yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That's, that's great. Um, so I'm going to change uh, courses now and, and ask you more things about your, about being an artist or being a writer. Um, uh-huh. First of all, can you tell me a little bit about the pictures behind you? Oh, <laughs> um, well, I started doing this thing. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but there was these, these ray guns back here behind me. Um, uh, when I, when I first left Hallmark, I'm, I'm a designer and an artist or a designer illustrator. And I really wanted to do these, uh, I, I'm trying to remember how the, the term was. It's this retro future, uh, Hispanic retelling of Flash Gordon. <laughs> right. So I'm like thinking like, what if Flash Gordon was Mexican? So that was kind of like my my premise, and then I started kind of like, what would the designs of the weapons be? What would the the you know this universe be if if the Flash Gordon universe kind of came from Mexico? And so there's there's a website somewhere, some somebody will find it. But I just started posting all these different de- ray gun designs, robot designs, spaceship designs because I was like, I'm going to build this world, and then at some point, I'm going to crash it all together and write a story an adventure story and i'm really like a big fan of um serials so i'm like oh i think i could do like a mexican flash gordon serial and th- this was this was the beginning so i i keep this stuff up so that i remind myself like i need to get back to that at some point because i really think there's there could be an audience for this where people people who like that retro future stuff would be excited and people who are Mexican kids who don't see themselves in that would be kind of excited. So that mm-hmm. was kind of the thing. And then, um, and then of course I have this, this is Batman from uh, Batman manga book that chip kid uh, designed. And I'm a big fan of chip kid. And so I luckily got a signed uh, copy of this poster. Uh-huh. And then the little, the little banners up at the top were from my birthday last year. I just never took them down. And then I think at the top is a bunch of little Batman action figures. Cause mm-hmm. I'm a big, I'm a big Batman guy, so I just like having Batman stuff. I can around. tell. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a little much. <laughs> and I can see Mexican up there. Yeah, Mexican. Uh-huh. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Come here, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, do you have a copy of Mexican there? Yeah. Of the book, or is that yeah. that is the book? Oh, okay, yeah, great. That is the book. That is the book. Ta-da. Wonderful. Okay. So that is a thick book. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> yes. At this. And by the way, by the way, a big shout out to uh, my designer, um, 
uh, Jennifer Kelly, who picked this paper that nobody else uses. It's this really thick, beautiful paper that just absorbs ink, but is to the touch. It feels like like older toothy paper. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very thick and wonderful. I love it. Great. <laughs> okay, so um, what is your favorite part about being? Okay, I'm going to ask two questions. What is your favorite part okay. about being an artist? And what is your favorite part about being an author? Uh, I think, sorry about that. Hey, stop it, you. Um, I, I really, uh, author, author wise, I really like, um, I really like the art of storytelling. And I really like trying to figure out how to tell a story a little differently and unexpectedly you know i like um i like finding callbacks when i can so i'll write a little story and if there's a possible way to surprise somebody with a callback i love doing that i love it just feels like a fun formula fun trick to figure out and then and then if i could add a little bit of emotion to it then i'm super happy about it uh artist wise i just like getting lost in a project i like I especially like big projects that kind of span. Um, I've done children's books for other people's work and I just like having the opportunity to spread out. I don't like really one, one off little pieces. I really like saying like, Oh, what else can I tell with, with illustrations and how can I pull somebody in, you know, to immerse them into something. And so that's really kind of what I enjoy about doing the artwork is like, can I, can I pull you in and can I tell you a visual story too? Right. Yeah. I, I, that's what I was thinking is that you like telling stories with pictures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So what has been your favorite adventure during your career? Oh, my, 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 my new short career that I just started. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 career as a graphic as a uh, graphic novel uh, author. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Well, yeah. Once again, this is my first time in the show, so I um, I got to go on all these really wonderful um, to these festivals and and uh, just this past year and just meeting the other writers. And being so welcomed into their community because I didn't know what I was going to get into, quite honestly. And they were they've been just amazing and giving me so much information and filling out the corners that I just didn't understand about the whole business. And they were just like super sweet, like, you know, tell me you call any time, any information you need. I got it. If you need, you know, a sample contract, I can send you one. Like everybody's just like super, super sweet. But then the other part of it was that I got to do a book festival where it wasn't just middle grade authors. It was um, authors of all different genres. And I got to sit at tables with, you know, Pulitzer Prize winners and, you know, investigative reporters. And there's all these different like levels of, of writers and just everybody is being so super cool. And, you know, if they if they were interested or they were fake interested in me it was regardless it was super cool <laughs> they did a great job of welcoming me and so i think that was that's been the biggest thing is just meeting everybody and under getting to know just the best people mm -hmm. that's true the 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 book community is just a fabulous community They're oh and by the amazing. way um if i if i can just say the the independent booksellers are like my heroes they have been champions from the get-go and just just I, I got to meet a bunch of them at one festival and they were just all not only insane but just wonderful and giving and just being like moving moving people in their communities you know with with just just simple words and just simple like oh seeing a kid who might look lost and helping them find themselves in a book, you know, just these, these little things have just been amazing. And I, I saw it with my own eyes and I was just like, you guys are the best. So congratulations. Independent <laughs> Thank <bookstores. you. laughs> amazing, amazing people. So what is the greatest lesson that you've learned thus far in your career? Mm, yeah. uh, there's, uh, there's so much I, I, 
I just, I just think because this is like my, my second chapter in life that, um, that I, I, I feel like there's so much more to give. And I think like everybody has that in them. And I feel like if, if you feel like you're being pushed down in one, one job or one career and stuff like there's, there's no reason to keep being crushed. There's other, other places to go. There's other avenues for, you know, your, your work and your, your stories. And I, and I think that not seeing that for the longest time and then finally seeing it, like, it, it was kind of the biggest aha. I was like, Oh, I'm not just this. I'm, I can also be something else. And I think the, the theme kind of of the next story that I'm telling is kind of that where, you know, where the, where somebody's asked like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you have, you feel like you have to have an answer and you have to stick to that answer. And you don't, you know, that, that question is kind of silly and sometimes it kind of locks you into something that you don't want to do. So, um, so I think, I think just possibility has been the big, biggest aha, you know, in this whole, whole new career. Mm -hmm. So what piece of advice would you want to give other authors? Um, I think just being um, uh, authentic. Um, I I found that everybody who has done work that has been really well, widely received, even though it seems to be like, oh, this is a very specific story, just based on just the authenticity of them telling that story as best they can, it opens it up to everybody. I feel like it's like the universal specific. So you're being very, very specific about a thing that's very personal and authentic to you. People will find something to love about it because there's going to be a universal truth floating around in there because you're telling it as authentically as possible. So I've, I've had people tell me like, Oh, I want to write this Indiana Jones story. I'm like, okay, as long as it's your Indiana Jones story, you're not, you're not just parroting somebody else. Like if, as long as it's the personal, personal story that you're telling them, you're going to have a great time and you're going to enjoy it. You're not going to fight it. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Huh. Good point. Okay. Um, are there any groups, clubs, or organizations that you would recommend to other um, uh, authors or illustrators that might have helped you in your career? Well, I unfortunately started kind of in the middle of the pandemic. So <laughs> so I was in this, this basement. I'm in the basement. This basement uh, the whole time. So I didn't really get to talk to anybody or so I think I think I've only have, have come out since I started doing the the tours and the and the festivals. But I, like I said, going back to the the um, independent bookstores and the libraries, they are all just wanting to help and wanting to you know expose you to other stuff. And um, so if 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 you're just starting out, that's probably the best way to go. It's just like hit up your local you know independent bookstores and just ask them who's around because they know who's who the other authors are in town um they know mm -hmm. who's who's about and so that they can connect you with other, you know other people and say you know who do you know who does this and then you know and yeah it's always that, uh, introducing yourself and asking questions interesting idea i you're the first one that said anything <laughs> like that that's a very interesting <laughs> idea huh good good Okay, now I have questions about you as a person. What is one thing that most people don't realize about you? Uh, I used to be the drum major in a marching band when I was in high school. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay. And and I can spin. I don't have anything to spin, but I any broom or any kind of stick that I find, I usually spin it because I'm all the muscle memory is still there. So they'll figure it out. As soon as they see me do it, they're like, were you a drum major? Yeah. How did you guess? Well, cause you're spinning the stick all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is or are your passions when you're not working and how do you make time uh, to do the things that you love? That's, that's really hard because I think any writer and, and it's, especially writer illustrators are glued to these spots for hours on end. When I was working on this book, 
I was doing 12 hour days because again, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was just like, I have to crank as hard as I can because I didn't know when it was due or how to, or I knew what it was due. I just didn't know if I would make it. But um, so during that process, it's really, really hard to do anything else. But um, uh, I love cooking. I'm not good at it, but I love doing it. Um, I love, I love running. Uh, I don't get off enough to do time enough to do it because usually if you go running, then there's, you're tired and then you got to, you know, recoup and then reset. And so it's really hard to like fit a big chunk of time into what we do. So, so in the, in the middle of these things, um, I really just enjoy writing my little weekly story. That's actually like, it's a job, but it's a, it's a fun hobby to just write these little stories and research my family and mine them for more information. Cause like I said, it's all kind of memoir based. And so there's just a lot of stuff there and I just have to figure out how they connect together. So that's kind of the fun is connecting the puzzle pieces of a story and trying to figure out like, what is it about? Kind of, so do those kind of things. Okay. Um, what does your studio space look like? I mean, I know you're there right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. And what do you need well, to have with you when you're, uh, when you're writing or, or doing your artwork? I was, I was going to see if there was a dog around. There's, there's a couple of dogs floating around that I always enjoy having. Um, but this is the, the studio is part of the basement. So the basement goes out that way. Um, but usually it's, um, I have my uh, little sound machine that does the ocean sounds, which I love to turn on. That's my, my thing when I'm writing. And then when I'm illustrating, it's, it's music, it's, TV shows I've seen a million times, so I don't have to look at them. I could just listen to them. Um, uh, Better Call Saul, I've seen 20 times. And I'm and I, anytime I need to draw something, I'm like, I put Better Call Saul on because it's just wonderful dialogue and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do like my space, but um, because it's a basement, we always have problems with critters. And while I was working on this book, there's a drop ceiling here. We were having mice come in and out, which is normal. But then one day we heard what sounded like a very large mouse, which my wife's like, it's a rat. It's a big rat. And I went through the, uh, all the pushed the tiles up with my camera and started taking pictures around. And right above me, right above my head, there was this possum, this big, gigantic possum that just <laughs> sat there growling at me for three days. Like I couldn't get it out. And I was like, Oh, I, I asked people on Facebook, how do I get this out of here? And they're just like, put a ladder up. They'll, they'll climb down the ladder. It's like, well, they climbed down the ladder, but then they'll be in the house proper. And, and then we try to get it out ourselves by like popping one of the tiles and seeing if we can catch it in a bin. And it just grabbed on with its little prehensile tail and pulled itself up. So there was just finally got this guy to come out, this professional to come out. And we took about two hours to untangle its little tail and get it out of here. But but working in the basement, that's that's the action you get down here. It's just weird animal critters other than the ones you own uh, going in and out. Uh, eventually, sometimes it floods down here. Uh, machinery blowing up. It's just, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You said you listen to music too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what kind of music do you listen to? Is it, um, I, you know... Uh, classical or or well so, no rock. usually it's it's yeah like like uh i like 70s music just be, and especially with this book because it's set in the 70s i kind of wanted to have the full effect going going on um you know i had a lot of fleetwood mac happening because my brother was really into fleetwood mac so i'm like i said like, i should probably do this and kind of so it's 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 of the mood so whenever i'm working on a specific thing i try to find music that kind of speaks to that so you know in the mexico part of the story i was listening to a lot of uh, mariachi and a lot of ranchera music and um i had uh on youtube there's all these women who these mexican women who cook in their backyards and i like to have those on They're, they don't say much they just talk about the you know the the ingredients and then you just hear fire going and you hear stuff hit, hitting the you know it's asmr mexican asmr Really, really wonderful. So, so it's a big mix of just whatever. But yeah, usually it's like. So you don't like silence. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it makes you... I think it makes you more in your head than you need to be. Like, I think the... I think the music kind of like pop, propagates ideas in your head for some reason. I don't know. I just kind of like it. Like it makes me remember things better or, you know, say like, Oh, this is a really interesting piece of imagery that I would love to like incorporate into this thing. So yeah. So music is probably best and ocean sounds, like I said, for some reason. Uh, yeah, now I heard you mentioned dogs. Did you yes. say dogs? Yes. Yes, they're usually they're usually do, right do, here. Do they help or hinder you with your work? Oh, they are the worst. You guys are terrible. <laughs> they're the worst. Well, they 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 help because they give me uh, time management skills because they have to have certain things at certain times. So they'll come and tell me like, now it's time to to go out. Now it's time to feed me. Now it's time, you know, like stop what you're doing. And get out of, of the chair and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so they they're in control of my schedule. What kind of dogs are they? Uh, they're both rescues. They're uh, Chihuahua mixes. One's a Chihuahua Yorkie, a Chorky, and the other one's a Terrier Chihuahua. Um, uh, so they're kind of they're kind of smallish, um, but they're just wonderful little little rescues. We we've been rescuing dogs for years, and so uh-huh. yeah, we just love a good hard luck story. Uh huh. Oh, that's great. Okay, I just have two more questions for you. Okay. One is, where can people find your work aside from Annie's Bookstop of Worcester? And I always yes. put a plug in. I always put a plug in for Annie's. Um, you, you can get yeah. Mexicans at Annie's. Uh, if you call us at five zero eight seven nine six five six one three, or you can email us at orders at Annie'sBooksWorcester dot com. And where else can people make it? Um, well, uh, well, Mexican, Mexican. This book, this guy, uh, of course, is Mexican, and, and, and yeah, it's it's at Annie's for sure, for sure. Um, but any other uh, online thing, but I wouldn't recommend an online thing. I'd go to your your uh, your independent bookstores. And um, as far as finding like other stuff online, um, Mexican stories at Mexican stories uh, is all the uh, serial stories that kind of flow into this book. Um, Mexican.com has has a bunch of the stories there. Uh, and uh, Pedro Martin Books also has a bunch of stuff in there too. So I'm kind of like trying to consolidate everything in one space, but I can't. Um, and then Go Comics uh, runs Mexican as well. So if you want to see Go Comics and see it in a different format, that's a different way to go. But, but this guy is... He, just, he was just out in August, and so um, should be available everywhere. Excellent. So, how can we follow <laughs> your work and share your awesomeness? Oh, um, on Instagram um, at Mexican Stories on Instagram. Um, that's where all the latest information is going on. That's where I'm putting up any kind of appearances. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out to do stuff in person on my own, which is going to be a new thing. So. <laughs> If you guys, if uh, if you uh, have access to a school or you know people in the school um, systems that are looking for an author to come by and visit, that I'm available. I'm starting to do that now. So, uh, oh, excellent! Get, yeah, find me coming on to, Instagram. Are you coming to bookstores? Uh, if I get invited. <laughs> well, you're certainly welcome yeah. to come to Annie's. Oh, sure, for sure. I mean, I haven't been to. Boston in such a long time. I really like to come back. It's been it's been years, and I loved it when we were when we were there. So, yeah, I would love to come back. Great, excellent. That would be wonderful. We'd love to have you. Awesome. So, let me know when you're in the area. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. yeah. I I will be posting wherever I go, and then if people want to like grab onto where I'm going and say, oh, we're like a couple miles from wherever you you are. And I have time, I'll definitely swing by and do, you know, sign books or whatever, or just say hi. Excellent. Thank you so much for, for joining me. And uh, we will hopefully be seeing you sometime in the near future. And congratulations on your Newbury honor. Oh, thanks, Peter. Selena. I really appreciate it. Pedro Martin. Thank and uh, we'll see you sometime soon. <laughs>